Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And in this video, I'm going to take you through how I've ended up with nine eliminators made from a single box of three. I think the eliminators are a great kit. Bought them to add into my Marine Island originally with only the intention of actually making up three models. And it, uh, like these things do, escalated in the nine you're watching there. So when I was doing the set, I built the three models with Laz Fusils initially, mostly because, rule of cool, I think the weapons look brilliant, but actually in 10th edition, the rules are pretty cool as well. Now when I'd done that, I realized I'd got a lot of weaponry spare. Each of the individual eliminators you can build in one of three ways, so you end up with six spare sets of weaponry. Now I've got a box of nine infiltrators knocking around that I literally only bought to make a pilot for my tactical war suit, and again, that video's on the channel. So I built up six bodies, just at random, the first six that were in the book, and then started test fitting together the pieces from the eliminators. Now in some cases, like this one here, you will get the entire left arm, the entire right arm, and you can just glue it onto the body, job done, you don't have to do any work. But in this case here, with the raised pistol, for example, the left arm is fine, glue that straight on, the pistol can go on, the right hand that holds the pistol, you can then attach on, but there's no shoulder piece and no sort of upper arm because that part on the kneeling down eliminator model is kind of fixed to the body. So all I did was took an infiltrator arm, matched it up so it was kind of in the right kind of flow and frame, and then gradually sliced off the upper part of that arm until I ended up with just the shoulder panel. Unfortunately, a lot of that was off camera. I didn't get a lot of great footage of this, but we'll work with what we've got. And then glued that onto the arm and glued the rest of that kind of pistol arm onto it. Moving on to the next weapon you see there, I thought it was a brilliant sniper rifle. Unfortunately, when you look at the actual right arm and the left arm on this original sniper rifle build, I'd already used on one of the models. So again, it was taking an arm from the infiltrator kit that was held in roughly the same pose that the arm from the eliminator was, matching it up and working out where I need to slice it from. The arm on the rifle there, you've got it from kind of the elbow downwards. So it was a case of gradually removing uh, off the infiltrator kit, just, uh, just above the elbow. And again, test fitting it, slicing it down to size before gluing it back together on to what is now the new eliminator. And I went through all six models like that until we end up with six kind of basic torsos holding the weaponry and then we can move on to the next stages. I wasn't super precious about making sure every single gap had been filled because we're going to put some cloaks on later and we're doing some green stuff work so you can fill kind of any gaps but the neater and tidier you are at this point the easier the later stages are so it was fairly neat and tidy but if you're doing something similar you don't need to be completely worried about the gaps and things especially if they're on the shoulders or on the back. Now it's time to put chapter symbols on. The best way I can explain it is a short I put together from this work. So what we've taken is a donor part with some Dark Angel symbols and things on, made some little blue stuff molds, which I've got a full video on how to do that, I'll link down below. Take a very thin layer of green stuff, drop that into that mold, smear it down, leave it to thoroughly dry. When it is, you peel the parts out that you've cast up and then slice these up to get the uh, chapter symbols off. Now I use a Dark Angel chapter symbol on one shoulder and an Imperial Fist chapter symbol on the other, because these are the Fists of Caliban, I think is my concept name for them at the moment, um, putting two chapters together. So that's what I did, that's a quick short. Again, there's videos on how to use blue stuff and green stuff, I'll link down below for how to make those molds. But it's a little bit of work, but it makes them really interesting because you end up with all those chapter symbols on your models that you would have to spend a lot of money to do, or maybe you know 3D print some stuff or some people are pointed out. Now what I'm mixing up here is a lot of green stuff, I'm also mixing up Milliport. These are two different types of products for doing conversions and casting and making things. Once they're both kind of mixed together, I'm mixing about a third of Milliport into uh, two thirds of green stuff. The reason for that is when we're making cloaks, green stuff can be quite flexible and it will move around a little bit. I wanted to put a little bit of rigidity into that cloak uh, so when it dries, we're not bashing it around. Now I ended up having two goes at making the cloaks on here and the first one I'm gonna show you is where it went a little bit wrong. I smoothed the green stuff down, kind of made a bit of a uh, curve at where the neckline is gonna be and then just sliced off the bottom for the curve of the bottom of the cloak. And I thought, well, that will do, let's uh, stick that on. This is a little bit how I do uh, fur and things, but I've never really done this in terms of making a proper cloak, but the principles are kind of the same. You'll notice I put Vaseline down on the piece of paper I'm working on, that's to stop it sticking onto there. I've also put that paper down so it doesn't pick up all the texture off my cutting mat that is a bit old and bashed. My fingers are wet and I've got some um, Vaseline on my fingers when I'm working. And all I'm doing here really is taking a sculpting tool and 
um, well, sculpting literally, uh, the cloak into the shoulders of the model. Now, the one I'm working on has got the sculpted on cloak from the Eliminators on the shoulders already. And I'm just trying to blend it in to those parts. So it's the flow from the pre-sculpted into this. And I'm trying to add some natural folds and things into that cloak. Now I then super glued on a backpack that we'd taken from the Infiltrator kit. Thought, well, we're kind of done. But honestly, I really didn't like what it looked like. Now at this stage, the green stuff is not set. It's had about half an hour to 45 minutes of curing time because it loses its stickiness and it's easy to work. So if you make a mistake like I've done, I hated it. So I pulled that green stuff off, I rolled it back into a ball again, and I started again, taking it a little bit careful this time and thinking there was just too much material going on that model and it wasn't cut to shape because I suppose on a real cloak, there would be some shape to that cloak before it goes on. So I've shaped what is now the bottom of the cloak and I'm taking some diagonal angles from the, what is now the top of the cloak, almost to pre-shape it before I start putting the green stuff on. And I cut a very small, thin V neckline almost uh, that will go round the neck and shoulders of the model. Now doing this little bit of pre-work definitely helps with putting this cloak on. Um, smaller area we're working with and um, yeah, it just definitely helped. Now this first model, I'm doing the cloak right down to kind of the ankles, like the eliminators are, uh, but I do mess about later with doing some shorter cloaks and you'll see that. So now it's the same principle again, taking the um, sculpting tool that I'm using, and this is a silicon kind of um, ended sculpting tool from Green Stuff World, but you could use a metal one, you could use a cocktail stick, you could use whatever you want with a point on it. And all I'm doing is I'm dragging that green stuff along into the pre-sculpted shoulder areas where we've used that eliminator part and trying to make it look natural uh, so you can hopefully not see the joins uh, that much. Now once I've done that, I'm merging it in around the backpack that I've now obviously stuck on and then trying to make it fold and flow naturally around the model, sort of replicating what the Eliminator is doing, but also doing my own thing. You've got to make some contact points where this cloak is going to stick to the model, because if you don't, you know, chances it's going to snap off or break when you join gameplay. So that's why I've done the green stuff and really put mix so it's a little bit solid. And obviously I went around all the models doing that, putting the, the cloaks on, and then moving on to actually assembly of the models itself. Now, I'm not going to go fully into the basing, I've got a basing video in my marine list already, but just using some mini pot I've mixed up just to put some ridges and bumps into the base so it looks like they're in natural ground rather than flat bases. Drilling out the barrels, I've done another short reason on the channel about you know why potentially you might want to do that. It does add an extra nice bit of detail to models if you do drill out those gun barrels and it just puts an extra you know um, step and bit of visual interest in there. So drilled out all the barrels and then moved on to the next stages, which is cleaning up this green stuff. So I like the capes, I like what I've done, but there'll be little areas where you think, well, that's not quite neat and even, almost like a mold line on a standard model. So slicing it up at the bottom, this is one of the models that I did a sort of half cape on. And then you can take a little bit, if you want, of here, of sandpaper, and just smooth down any areas where you think, well, there's a lump in there, there's a section I'm not happy with, and treat the green stuff when it's set. This is the following day when I made it, exactly as you would a normal model, clean it up until you're happy. And you can see here, obviously the sand I've put on the base is dry. Now this build probably took me about two weeks, which is quite a long time for me to do uh, a squad, but I was doing it alongside buying Leviathan, you know, a lot of stuff going on at work or whatever. So it was a lot of time in between stages this to make sure everything is thoroughly dried. Now, if you're trying to do this quick, you know, you're you gonna have to think about letting things dry in between. What I'm doing here is a strip of green stuff, like a little sausage I'd smoothed out and then flattened down and uh, slicing some little squares off and just taking some very tiny squares of green stuff and dropping them on to where the cloaks are joining the kind of armor to make it look a bit like a clasp that's holding the cloak on. And now we're on really to exactly the same process that I do on my normal Marines for this build. Taking some green stuff to add some texture to the armor. This is liquid green stuff that you get to buy in a pot from Games Workshop and you can just texturize the armor up Check me other videos if you want to know what I'm on about a little bit more. Now here we are in base coat stage. I'm not going to show you the paint scheme, but I just want to show you what they look like with the kit bashed and converted one on the right and the standard eliminator on the left. We've got a full cloak versus a half cloak. And you can see the chapter symbols on both of those models. And I think particularly effective and I like what we've done. Now, the only difference in the paint scheme steps 
from my normal paint scheme for this chapter, which is on the playlist, so check that out if you can. But the only difference really is how I've done the cloaks. So I've taken the same colours that I use in the bases of the model and painted that onto the cloaks because the idea is this is what camouflages these guys up. So do the same for yours and it will make the kind of vibrant model blend into the terrain a bit more. So that's it, that's the squads done. So nine eliminators out of the box of three and obviously some infiltrators. Now, if you were talking about cost, Doing nine this way is actually cheaper than buying three different boxes of eliminators. That's not really why I did it. I did it more for the fun of doing some kit bashing and conversions. And I'm really happy with the three squads I've ended up with. So hopefully you liked that. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you again.